Earlier tonight, we watched our next guest make good on his New Year's resolution to simultaneously date 32 women in the woods of Pennsylvania. Here to tell us how that went, please welcome The Bachelor, Matt James. Hi, Matt. How are you? What's going on, Jimmy? How you doing? I'm doing well. You got a beard now, huh? Yeah, you know, it's a little cold. I'm back up in New York, so I had to get a little insulation. Is it also giving you some anonymity having the beard? <laughs> Maybe a little right? bit. Yeah, are people recognizing you now from even though the show just premiered tonight from the promos and that sort of thing? You know what's nice with the masks and everything going on now? It's kind of, you can kind of move in silence. So I haven't really been stopped too often, uh, which has been kind of nice. It's interesting because typically they'll find The Bachelor on, you know, The Bachelorette or Bachelor in Paradise, somebody that, that stands out on one of those shows. But you've never, you've not been on any of those shows. Right. Yeah. I was actually supposed to be a contestant on Claire's season. And um, I ended up quarantining down in Florida because uh, they kind of put things on halt. And I got a call uh, in between a water balloon fight that uh, I was going to be uh, considered for the bachelor. And I thought they were pulling my leg. And then here we are eight months later. Now, how much did you think they were pulling your leg? Like, did you get a number to call somebody back to make sure they were, it wasn't one of your friends screwing around? I, I honestly thought it was a joke because I was like, this is too far out of left field. You know, I, that was the last thing I was expecting to get on my phone. It was a phone number I didn't have saved. And so I, I really downplayed it. And then they called back and they're like, no, seriously. And I kind of sat down for a second and I was like, I'm in. I'm honored, you know. When I heard that you were The Bachelor, I was confused because I rec I knew that I knew you and I couldn't figure out if I knew you from TV or if I knew you from real life. And then do I did a little bit of investigation and realized that we met like three years ago. How, was it three or four years ago that we met? Yeah, it was three years ago. We met three years ago backstage when you do your uh, annual show in Brooklyn. And uh, I'm actually, uh, Grace Dixon, uh, Mr. Dixon's daughter is uh, <laughs> one of my best friends. And we went to college together and I grew up with her boyfriend. So uh, anytime you're in town, I'm, uh, 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 honorary guest, and I got a chance to meet you then. I want to give a little bit of backstory to this Mr. Dixon you mentioned, because we call him Baby Doll. His name is James Baby Doll Dixon. Uh, he is my agent. He is a super agent. And he, and this is what I remember, and I don't know if you even know this, but this has gone on for years now. So he okay. introduced me to you backstage, and you know, you were there with a bunch of kids, a bunch of friends of, of his daughter. And you seem like a real nice guy. And you started telling me about this organization that you run. And tell me a little bit about the organization that you run. Yep. So uh, ABC Food Tours, it's a, a program that we established in the Lower East Side. And it's kind of branched out to all the five boroughs where we take students on food and fitness tours. And we kind of introduce them to culture through uh, different eating and fitness experiences. And now we've kind of elevated that to working with Fortune 500 companies and externship programs that Grace Dixon's actually spearheading. So the family is just growing tighter. So anyway, I hear about this and I thought, well, that sounds great. It sounds like a really nice thing that you're doing. And knowing that baby doll's a little tight when it comes to charity, not when it comes to buying himself things. Oh, then he's quite loose. He's a member of many, many country clubs, as you know. But I said, baby, I, we call him baby. I said, if you donate $10,000, to match charity, or I will match that donation. And he agreed. Am I correct in saying he agreed to do that? He said, oh, Jimmy, oh, Jimmy, of course. <laughs> yeah. And every three months or so since then, I've checked in to say, hey, when are we <laughs> going to do this? And he always gives me the slip. So now that we're on television, let's show some pictures of Baby Doll, just in case uh, people run into him on the street. <laughs> there he is uh, smoking. <laughs> he didn't smoke all there he's with my aunt chippy uh smoking uh here he's smoking alone in my home uh there you can see he's enjoying lobster that money could have been given to your organization there he oh is smoking my gosh. again and this is the cover of his christmas card this year uh there he is smoking through a little hole he poked in his mask so again i would like to challenge james baby doll dixon <laughs> <laughs> to, don't, to give $10,000 and I will match it. And uh, let's see, we're going to stay on him for this. That Those pictures couldn't have been a more accurate portrayal of, of when he's outside. That is hilarious. 
<laughs> you, um, so let's get to The Bachelor and talk about this because I cannot think of a better situation dating-wise. Normally, this is a nightmare. But in this particular case, with COVID going on, you've somehow been blessed with the opportunity to have 32 women who've all been tested and quarantined for two weeks brought directly to you, like a king, like a shah or something. <laughs> well, well, as you saw, there's a queen there, so it's fitting, you know? <laughs> And it's funny because yeah, at the beginning, you gathered everyone around for a prayer. And that was a smooth move, by the way. I mean, I'm sure you're sincere about it, but that knocked some of those women for an absolute loop. They didn't know what to do with themselves. Some were like, well, would it be in inappropriate for me to throw my underwear on him right now? <laughs> so you got all these women and they're all, of course, in love with you the moment they step out of that limo. One steps out with a vibrator. One steps out with a purse full of meatballs, which, by the way, was that was strong, I thought. I like that. And, and the woman who, uh, Victoria, who calls herself the queen, was it difficult for you to not throw up on her when she announced, <laughs> when she said, yes, queen? To be honest with you, I I appreciated everything about Victoria's entrance and who she was because whatever you need to do to stand out, she did it. And I remembered her name and it was lighthearted and it made me, it broke the ice, you know? There's, it's such a tense situation and I was nervous. And then when she comes out uh, with everything that she is, it just, you know, it put a smile on my face and it, and it brought less tension to the night, so. Did you, do you think she was popular with the other gals? I know she was popular with other girls. She was, really, because She's, I don't yeah. know. It did. Well, I guess we're going to see how this plays out. I was surprised. That, I was wondering if when you gave her the rose at the end, if that was one of those things where the producers say, I know she's awful, but please, we need to keep, we need to have a couple bad ones in the, in the mix. No, that, was, that wasn't the case. She was great. I, I really enjoyed Victoria. And are you marrying her? <laughs> All right. Do you want to see who my wife picked? And I'd I'm going to be. I'm going to be watching your face very closely here, okay? Okay. All right. The final three. Brie. Okay. She likes Brie. This is Abigail. She likes Abigail. And according to my wife, your bride will be Rachel. Your thoughts? Uh, I'd love to know the thought process. I don't think there is a thought process. She just kind of looks at him. <laughs> sometimes she sometimes she picks before the show starts and she just looks at a picture and decides and somehow she gets it right. I don't know. I will say that your wife has great taste. Your okay. Wife has great taste. All right. All right. Well, we know that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's very good to see you. So here's what we're going to do. The next time I see you, which will be at the conclusion of the show, hopefully in person, <laughs> we will make sure that we've got that $20,000, okay? <laughs> Deal. I appreciate you, Jamie. Thank you. Very good to see you, Matt. That's Matt James, The Bachelor. Watch him Monday nights making love to women left and right here on ABC. We'll be right back with Machine Gun Kelly. Jimmy Kimmel. Let's <laughs> go.